Oh, there we go. So coming into New Mexico here. All right. Watch it. Zero forty-six, forty-seven. Less than ten minutes. Okay. So that's what this shows you. There's going to be a 10 minute. When there's sometimes there's really big ones across the U.S. and it's really fun to watch because it actually rolls because there's another satellite popping up over the horizon that's eliminating that rain uh, that's going to happen. So you have to do rain prediction before you go on your flight if you're going to be shooting GPS approaches because you need to know when you get there. So we would just mark down that between about 040 or uh, 0040 and zero zero, well, I guess uh, zero one zero, we would not shoot the approach during that time. If we arrived there during that time or whatever, then we would ask to hold because we know that there is a predicted outage during that time. That's just based on known satellite outages. So they've got a satellite down that they're working on. They've got it offline. So that's going to affect our rain. Any questions on that? The GPS receiver, if you're doing an approach and you've got the approach loaded into the GPS, it will do an automatic rain check two miles prior to the final approach phase. If it gets anything, what it's checking is it's doing a prediction. It's saying, okay, from here to the airport now, am I going to have rain the entire length, or is there something that says I won't? because of the known geometry of the satellites and where they're at and the signals and everything like that. So if I get an intake at two miles, I'm done with the approach right then. I'm just holding my altitude, going to the missed approach point and doing the missed approach. It's over at that point. Okay, GPS. Is GPS angular or linear? It's linear. Okay. So it has three functions. Five miles. So if you jump in a hundred uniform Victor, that one is still five miles. I don't know why it can't update. All the rest of them updated. That one was still showing five miles though. Two miles is the new standard. That's what you're going to see in everything. Okay. It doesn't just snap to the next mode. There is an actual gradual thing. You'll notice it with your students. You'll be flying along, and it'll start changing into approach mode or something. And all of a sudden, their needle just slowly starts moving off the map or off the. Uh, off to the side. It's not that they're any further off course or getting further off course, it's just that the sensitivity is changing and they are exceeding the new standard. Terminal, one mile. <coughs> Approach, 0.3. Okay, when do they change? If, now this is a big if, a lot of instructors are missing this, you must have the flight plan loaded in the GPS or it will not switch between these modes for you. So if you just load in something random, a direct to, it will always default to in route mode. So if you're doing a terminal procedure trying to use in route mode, you're going to exceed the safety tolerance of that procedure because it's only been charted for the one mile and now you're using a two mile tolerance. So you've got to be careful that you're actually in the right mode for what you're doing. If you load everything into the GPS accurately, at 30 nautical miles from the departure or arrival airport, it will automatically switch between and route and terminal mode. Approach mode will automatically change as long as the approach is loaded into the GPS. It will change to approach mode two miles prior to the final approach fix. And you can watch it, it's dead on. Boom, two miles and the little symbol changes from TRM to APR. Okay. Now, like we said, it does do it slowly on the actual sensitivity, but when it changes, it changes visually automatically. 
Where's that symbol? So it's on uh, in the G1000. You've got your HSI. And it says it like right here. It'll say term or approach, APR, or en route, ENR. So it's right there on the HSI. That's also where you would get your integer, your integ. A big yellow integ would pop up right there on your HSI also. So that way if you're trying to use the purple needles, you're like, integ, what? You can't use purple needles. You've got to switch over to something else. Okay. GPS. GPS can legally be substituted for DME. In our Diamond Stars, we do not have real DME. We have GPS distance. Okay. It can be substituted for VORs, out of service VORs. It can be substituted for NDBs. Obviously, we don't have NDB equipment. I was told to hold on an NDB, not a problem. We can use the GPS to substitute that using the OBS mode. GPS cannot be used for the final approach course for a non-GPS approach. Why? Why can't I shoot an NDB approach using GPS? Isn't GPS more accurate? So why can't I shoot an NDB approach? All right, here's why. When that, when that NDB approach was charted, is NDB angular or linear? Angular. When it was charted, it was charted like that, okay? So technically, what you're looking at, this isn't a good representation, but you would actually have sections out here that are not charted that you potentially could be off course and there could be an obstacle there because it was not measured for a linear path. It was measured for an angular path. Would I trust GPS over an NDB any day of the week? But the chart, the procedure, was not made for the linear course guidance and that's why you can't use it. So I can't use purple needles for GPS. I can't use that for a VOR approach, an ILS, an NDB, only for a GPS. GPS can also be substituted on an ILS that says ADF required. So under the note section, if it says ADF required, as long as I've got an IFR certified GPS, I'm good. Doesn't it, doesn't it switch for you? Isn't the G1000 just automatically, once you go to the final approach fix, doesn't it switch? Back to what you're supposed it's to be using? It's supposed to. There is a setting in there, I think, where you can turn that on or off, though. So, yeah. So you do have to make sure. So once you're on the final approach course, got to be on your correct navigation source. Okay, GPS accuracy. It can be off as much as 20 to 30 meters, which is 90 feet horizontally. Whoops, get a zero in there. And as much as 600 feet vertically. Okay? Now the reason for that vertical error is because here's my airplane, right? Look, I'm getting checked from both sides, but I'm only getting checked from one side. Because your horizontal position is being checked on satellites from all around you, it's very easy to get your horizontal position down. The vertical position, however, don't have anything from below, and so it's a little bit harder to get that down accurately. Okay? There's three things that cause this error. The biggest one is actually the ionosphere. What is the ionosphere? It's the outer layer of the atmosphere. That's where the sun hits first, it's what stops all of us from getting microwaved. It ionizes and it protects us from the what is it, the, the solar radiation, electromagnetic, I don't know. I'm not that smart. Okay, but it also interferes with the satellite signal. The satellites are orbiting at 11,000 miles above the Earth. Pretty far up. Okay, so as that signal comes through the ion.